Alrighty, patrons. We're live. It's a live show. Never mind. It's live. Not according to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Oh. No, YouTube does know we're live. It's just not telling anybody. Until I see. Like because I missed one little thing. See? I told you we're live. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, wow. okay. Sure. I see how it is. All right. Well, listen. Hey, patrons. We apologize for being late. Like, late, late. Because... Mm-hmm. We had a plan. We'll talk about this in the regular show. We had a plan. We had a guest. The guest, unfortunately, came up with something and apologized. Um, And this is sort of a, not quite a spoiler. They're in a different time zone. And so we didn't know until uh, (laughs) when none of us were awake (laughs) that that they weren't available. And so, and I've uh, got a lot of stuff going on. Long story short, we had to like pivot and do something else. Uh, and here we are, and then we had some tech stuff. So, ta-da! We're finally, like, live online. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, yeah. it was just trying to find the workaround. The workaround's working fine. Who is the thought all I needed to do was mute myself to, to Gary and Damon, and everything would be fine? Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It's very weird. Yeah, the, the the logic isn't there, but yeah, again, when is there large logic? You know. Um, speaking of things that are not necessarily logical, because I don't know how else to pivot to this. Um, in unrelated news at all, uh, are either of you aware of what's happened? Um, well, all right, I'm going to make a big presumption that you both know who Warwick Davis is. Yes, the actor. I know mm-hmm. the name. I can't remember. Oh, oh, uh, Willow. Yes. Okay. And then played Wick at the Ewok and has been in a bunch of like Star Wars films and a bunch of stuff. Anyways, um, Warwick's spouse passed away, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. like in the past day. Um, and <laughs> I was just on Twitter and anyways, it says, Warwick had posted a couple hours ago, I'm done here signing off with a broken heart like emoji. And then just an hour ago, uh, there's a follow up. It says, thank you, everyone, for looking out for our dad. He is taking some time away from social media. He apologizes if his last message caused anyone any concern. We appreciate all of your love and support. Annabelle and Harrison, which are his kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So. It's not a, a great circumstance, obviously. And slight, you know, they're going through things. Slight scare. Right, right. Like <laughs> Unintentional, obviously. My favorite part, though, honestly, it's very touching, is that the kids do enough to follow up and be like, hey, yo, by the way. Uh, hey, Dad, can, can, yeah. can, can, you, can I borrow your phone? <laughs> right, right, right. right <laughs> I'm, I'm, right, I'm going right. to quickly type a message to your followers. <laughs> right. It, it won't just be from you. Sure you don't have to look aware. at it or anything. I'm just, 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 just gonna check in with them to let them know just how you signed off. Just, not am worried. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it uh, I just thought that was that was good. But I had seen the post online that um, that she had passed away, and I was like, oh, that's unfortunate. Mm. She actually played. Willow's wife in the limited series on Disney Plus that they took away that nobody can watch. Oh, Why right. Which is super shitty. So they did a limited series sequel to the movie. Right. Last, last year or in 22. And it was okay. I mean, it was nice to return to that universe. I enjoyed it. I liked it. But... Um, and right. it definitely had an ending that like spoke that there was going to be a second season. Mm. 
And Disney Plus just outright was like, nope, not happening. Uh, And it was a swift announcement after the season aired. And then within six months, like they took it away. Like, it's just not there. You can't even watch it. And a lot of folks were kind of bothered by that because they were like. Some people, I think, were feeling, all right, we get it. Like, you're like, you're not happy about like the like how the response came about. But like, why take that away from people who actually enjoyed it or were not worse, but also or wanted to just see it, you know? Uh, it Sorry. could be. Um, my thinking might be that because not enough people were watching it, that they were like, "Okay, we need space on the platform" or something like that. Similar to another series that was created, they even announced the second se- second season. They started working on it and the platform they were originally on took it off the platform. Hmm. What show are you talking about? There was hell to pay. There was uh, hashtags and, and everything for it. It was called Star Trek Prodigy. Oh, right, 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 right. I was like, what are you talking about? Um, Which is now on Netflix correct. because Netflix picked it up. Right. Well, I mean, they just announced that Discovery, after it had pretty much wrapped principal filming on the fifth season, Paramount made the decision that they were not going to uh, continue it. So they had to go back and record a new f- ending to the season, which is technically now the ending of the series. Now, from my understanding, they may have also done a few reshoots for some of the other episodes to help lead it into an ending. But that's that's different because I don't think they're going to take Discovery off the platform after it's done. Uh, Well, right, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's a little, but it's a little strange because the whole premise of the Paramount Plus launch, part of that whole marketing piece was that Star Trek, the whole universe was going to be in one place finally going forward and you could see all the movies all the shows everything that was part of that uh technology like that aspect but anyways that's probably a discussion for another day (laughs) this is called uh uh uh, ott platform problems kind of like first world problems (laughs) Except for mm. online streaming service problems, where it's like there's not enough people that are watching this certain content or something, so we're just going to take it off the platform. And there's a business reason it saves money somehow, or I don't know, really quite understand how it goes. Uh, I just would really wish there was just like a site or a series of sites which are like. Look, if you're not going to have it on your platform, why don't we just have it here, archival purposes. If you want it back on your platform, we'll take it down from ours, and and you can have it on your platform. You know, however we do that, we'll strike a deal. We'll still, you know, we'll, you know, pay licensing fees and everything for it, maybe at a discount since you were using it anyways. Just so content could essentially be archived and viewable and it could be like an ad supported platform like Tubi or something. I think it's Tubi that did that. Mm-hmm. Something where where the content they have that they're not using they don't want to say have the use the server bandwidth for or something like that. I don't know. But it would be nice to be able to, like, be able to, that anything that could be able to be seen on, streamed online is available somewhere. Even if it's not on the main studio platform, like Disney Plus, Max, Paramount Plus, etc. Just available somehow right 
So if I have an inkling to watch the entire series of uh, Mask, I can easily find it and watch it. Actually, I think that actually is available or something. Ten Speed and Brown Shoes. Is that somewhere in there? Somewhere? And, and, so, and, and even like a bigger conglomerate, like maybe this is something that like the internet archive needs to spin off from itself. Like have have, mm. have like the the, the uh, internet video archive or something like that, where uh, it's a streaming platform that all shows ads to to provide some sort of income and everything being like hey if you're not going to have it on your platform send it to our servers we'll take care of it and then when you right. want to take put it back on your platform for whatever reason we'll give you metrics and everything and maybe it is something popular that you never knew would be something that's popular enough to be on your platform here's a way to kind of test that out and we'll just keep it here so it's viewable for essentially archival purposes. Hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. In unrelated uh, stuff, did, did you all see what I posted in our entourage earlier today? Uh, yes. I the YouTube video for Maddie Matheson. Oh yeah, I watched that. So, I've kind of like known of Maddie for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And I know that some people in the bear community lust over him. And yeah. I get it. He's a big guy. He's hairy. Covered in tattoos. Uh -huh. What? That was disturbing. What? My Siri reacted, and I don't know why. Mm. It's happened because I was talking about Maddie. I was talking about Maddie, and then it said, "Uh huh." Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "What the hell?" Uh, do, 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 do. Very Twilight Zone. Apple AI assistant, do you have some sort of thing for Maddie Matheson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, I didn't know you were into these things. Crazy. Do you like Don't my phrasing yeah, of that? By the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was just wild here's the thing is i was playing that video and he talks to the assistant like he asked it to send a timer or something and it did it it did it in my kitchen <laughs> it did it in mine too i was playing i was cooking in the kitchen while watching it and, and playing and then it did it and i was like for real and it's the first time it's ever happened a lot of podcasts i listen to they kind of make a joke about saying the trigger words you know the the prompt and uh it doesn't you know do anything but in this case for some reason it did today all right so anyways the whole reason why i'm bringing up maddie is if you watch the video mm -hmm. we did this man is is just bonkers but is a sexual being and has no qualms about discussing that openly <laughs> So, like, if you pay attention and you watch this video, he talks about, well, he talks about fucking, and he talks about the taste of jizz. And, like, you just kind of have to watch the video, because <laughs> it's wild. It is so wild to me. I was not prepared for that on this good day of, of whatever you believe in and the power of the universe. <laughs> Maybe it was because I was doing other things, but I didn't pick up on, on the whole his comments about the taste of jizz you have to but see the thing is you have to be watching because they were bleeping what he was saying so like i inferred that he was talking about fucking and he was talking about the taste of raw egg and comparing it to jizz <laughs> it was wild it was wild david's making a face david is, david is like no that's no <laughs> I mean, so, who would eat a raw egg? God. Maddie did. Well, I mean, most of them kind of do. <laughs> or they did it one time because it was a Rocky well, Balboa well, thing. Here's but anyways. Thing. Here's, here's the thing, David. 
Now you know raw eggs taste like jizz. Maybe that well, changes people's some people's opinions. Now this you're is probably what thinking of it as like texture and realizing what it actually is, and that's gross <laughs> to you, which is totally there. <laughs> but it's it's strictly about the taste. And you enjoy one thing, but previously you didn't enjoy the other because of the taste. And now you know they taste similar. Maybe you'd be into it. I don't know. No. I, and I'm, honestly, I'm I think I think part of the taste for for rawings <laughs> is probably the texture. Right. Because the so texture between the jizz salmonella. And, 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 <laughs> Look, salmonella. Look, there is. He's like, he's like, does nothing to do with the temperature. Has nothing to do with the like the viscosity or like the like the the sensation. Has to do with the shitting yourself uncontrollably because you now have like contracted a foodborne illness. <laughs> and to be fair, there are things called pasteurized eggs <gasps> that you can get. So you could have yes. raw pasteurized yes. eggs. That's true. Which, you could, which in but... some sense is kind of an oxymoron because how do you think they pass around no. things? I don't know. Anyways, anyways, mm -hmm. in the video that I posted, Maddie says the reason why he thinks of the of eating raw egg reminded him of cum was because he said <laughs> David's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> because he said, he said the issue though is. The eggs were cold. He's like, who eats cold cum? He's like, you don't. He's like, cum is hot. Cum when it is in your mouth is hot. Like, this is all being bleeped. Like, you have to watch this video. It is so wild. And I was like, is Maddie Matheson confessing that he, like, eats jizz? And he kind of, <laughs> and, and, his, and his videography staff is like, just, they don't know what to do with this. And I'm shocked it's in the edit. But he basically says, he's like, well, you have to taste test. Like, I mean, <laughs> this boy... As much as he is like, you know, a bit of a sex symbol in some ways, he is also just so wild. So wild. Oh my god. He, I and, mean, even before this video, any any time I've run into Maddie, uh, he's just been just over the in over the top. I, he, he, the one thing I like about him, because he's he does a cooking show, you know? He's written right. a cooking book, cookbook. <laughs> yeah, well, he makes money on food. And a lot of, like, the professionals, or I'm going to put that in quotes because it's not really professional professionals, but you know what I mean. Um, when they're writing cookbooks and stuff, they talk about, like, being sanitary and clean and making sure to do this. And Maddie Matheson is... A complete schlub in the most adorable <laughs> way possible. Well, it is ironic in this video that they showed the sink and he's talking about the, the dishes that aren't clean. But he's also talking about he op he pulls back the curtain a little and says in this video, like, I'm producing a ton of content because I'm about to go shoot the show The Bear that he's also a consultant on and an actor on. And he says, I'm going to be gone for three months. So like, he's like, this place is a disaster because we're just like churning out so much stuff to be pre-recorded. Um, but I agree with you. Like he, outside of that, he's still a um, individual that like d does it. He doesn't put on airs. He's just like, this is reality. This is how it is. Um, you know, and there's something, there is something alluring or, or drawing about that. He, but, he's, he he has a little bit of a lack of filter, which, I, again, is one of the reasons why he's kind of charming. Right. No, I, I would agree with that. Um, that being said, I don't know if it exists out there, but I would be interested. If there are dudes of Maddie Matheson, I would definitely look at them. I have a feeling that if there are, they're not authentic. I don't know. He strikes me as a motherfucker that doesn't care about like being naked oh, around other that, people and true. like having pictures taken. But I had in fact, I'm willing. I'm willing to say he has adventured and done a lot of things in his life. 
And even though he is married and has kids, I don't know if that any of that in his past has stopped. I'm just saying. I would not be surprised either way. When you say he's unhinged, it's unhinged in the not medically speaking sort of way. Yeah, yeah that's fair. So with that being said, <laughs> do we want to get into <laughs> tonight's Ooh. episode? Yay, boys. Sure. Speaking of seeing seeing someone's nudes. Well, uh, that's, 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 that's a segue. Where's my thing? Here it is. Bounce the studio mode. <laughs> All right. Let's hope everything goes smoothly. All right. Here we go. And in a three. And a two. Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, April 21st, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. I haven't smiled so hard. My face hurts like this. And I'm Gary. <laughs> Everyone else is thinking it. And I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, the indeterminant topic. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you, the uh, pre-show was, uh, uh, well, because of technical difficulties and, 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 and unhinged video producers, uh, we're a little later than normal, about an hour. But hey, here we are. Happy to be here. Oh, is it hot in here? <laughs> Jerry, what are we talking about today? Um, well, if we weren't going to get demonetized or shadow banned for the topic alone, <laughs> I don't know if that will be an issue or not. With you After taking doing your shirt a search off, on YouTube, I don't which I think is partially questionable as a as, as a method of like confirmation, but. Look, if there's videos <laughs> with the title of nudity available on YouTube and there right. isn't, well, actually, I'm <laughs> looking at some of the previews there, Ooh. but it yeah. can also be because I was logged in and, you know, I'm considered to be of that category, but well, and you're, you're an adult, right? a different account, uh, you probably wouldn't see those. So. Right. No, that's fair. That's fair. All right. So, uh, just so folks are aware, we had a, a interview show lined up we were actually at, I don't, i'm not gonna speak for the two of you i was excited about it i was looking forward I to was. it um and unfortunately because they're in another time zone uh we found out on a delay that um they unfortunately had to cancel and try to reschedule because something came up unexpectedly so um yeah and then it turned into a pivot for us to like figure out what we we're going to do as a show topic that being said uh, we didn't pivot let's talk about <laughs> uh, right no there there is a potential that this is a lead in to their being on the show <laughs> um, I mean, yeah so of. let's talk about nudity um yes aka the birthday suits the skin that we're in the way that we came into the world um <laughs> So Jeff is really embracing this. Um, I, on the other hand, I don't know about you guys. Uh, it is 42 here. 
um, in, my, in my neighborhood, which means it is like just about 60 something, which is not my comfort temperature. So I will be keeping my hooded sweatshirt on. Um, it's oh, 65 here. Right now. Yeah. Um, of course, I also kind of did this for a bit. So the shirt might be coming on a little bit. <laughs> That's fair. Just saying. David, I know you're checking your weather. Yes, it's 46 here. It's a little chilly, but it's yeah, 68 in my, according to the thermostat, where I'm sitting right now. Yeah, like it's right over there. So, but so I have the heat on. I don't think. Hold on, I didn't even do a a, a a check on this when I offered this up as a. Nope. No. Okay, so we've never discussed nudity, nude, nudism. Uh, I don't think we've discussed naturism or being naked. <laughs> like, I've tried all the searches across all our well, show topics. We've talked games. about being naked, just usually under a different topic. Well, Probably. that's what I mean is, like, we haven't dedicated a show to it. So, Fair. that being the case. <laughs> so, here's here's the question. Like, I have a couple of questions. But what it comes down to is, like, you know, now that we're uh, cubs of an age... Uh, of experience like how do we how do we feel about nudity um like do we have any hang-ups are we comfortable now versus when we were younger like is there a difference have have either have any of us ever like been fully comfortable with that or uh not like willing to bear all so to speak um it, it really Depends on the circumstance. Like, depending okay. on where I am, who I'm with, if I'm with anybody, like, okay, people around. Um, I, I can go one way or the other, and also how drunk okay. I am. That that can also help. <laughs> <laughs> and David does a spit take. I mean. That you're not wrong, Jeff, to say that like if you have a chemical enhancement, that can contribute to your comfort level. That lowers your inhibitions, as it were. Yeah. Right. Because I think if if you get some smoke, if you get some drink, like those will possibly facilitate your your comfort or your desire to not be covered up. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I'm at home, uh, like, and especially when I'm, I'm by myself or when my partner was around, um, it, it's not that like I'm nude all the time necessarily, but mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable having less clothes. Right. So, like, I and, mean, I and, think and that's especially fair. weather wise, also can can help with that. Temperature has to be high enough not too right and even sometimes too high um and <laughs> and i'm okay with with uh, taking it stuff off if i was in the door because of, because i had somebody coming over a certain type of person coming over uh i might <laughs> even answer the door need oh not necessarily showing people I was just gonna say you're braver than but, me. I'm like, my front door is open to the whole wide world outside, so I'm not be doing that. Interesting. Hmm. I'm careful. Sorry, I'm just on the on the appropriateness of where I would be nude. But right. needless to say, well, it's, I would say it's... on a scale of like one to ten, I'm probably a seven or eight. I mean, it's funny that you say that because I just realized that uh, in the past, I guess, week, there was a moment where I was like doing something and I think I had gotten freshly out of the shower and I hadn't put clothes on and I had something, maybe it was last weekend, I had something like in the oven or in the kitchen and I needed to like check on it. And I was just like, I just walked, you know, from the upstairs to the downstairs and over to the kitchen or whatever. But as I'm standing in the kitchen, I'm like conscious of the fact that I'm like near a window that's not high, but you know, like it's not easy on the ground to be able to see in. Right. Um, and people kind of have to be up close to try to see in because it's the sink, it's the above the sink in the kitchen. Um, 
And so like, but I do have most of my windows, especially on the first floor, kind of covered up. Not that I'm a nudist or a naturist, but I'm just like privacy, you know? And the idea of like the outside world just kind of like peeping in is not a thing that I enjoy. Um, mm. So, but I also don't want to not have windows. And because of the area where I live, there is quite a possibility that someone would walk right by a window um, without me knowing that they're about <laughs> to walk past my window in my damn yard because I'm I'm on a corner of two streets. So there are sidewalks. So there are always people coming and going, passing, like riding bikes mm -hmm, out for walks mm -hmm. with their pets, with their kids. So like I like to I like the illusion of the privacy. <laughs> I, I say illusion with air quotes <laughs> because I have the curtains like drawn is that the right word um so that way i you know feel comfortable in my own home that way but i don't know i mean like i i find it interesting jeff that you had said like you know if you're around somebody that's your partner or you feel comfortable with like then it's not quite the same thing and right. i know like i've had probably since puberty i mean i've been a bigger person most of my life now like definitely four plus decades um i put weight on i was a bigger like small kid and then that just kind of carried through all the way through like my education and so i was reluctant like i was i wanted to die before taking my clothes off in sixth grade gym class so in the elementary mm. school I went to, we had to in fifth grade, we had to use the the lockers, the 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 gym, quote unquote, lockers facility. And it was basically to acclimate us from when we go to high school. And then in sixth grade, we took showers. And we had to get naked. And in today's day and age, I know some people are going to have a reaction to this. Like the gym teacher watched us take showers. And so assured that we as boys like took all of our clothes off, got it, went into the shower room, turned on the water, preferably used soap, like rinsed off and went and toweled off and then got dressed again. Um, and in the midst of puberty, that was mortifying. Plus, I was a bigger kid, like and I was just afraid like people were going to make fun of me. Plus, I also at that time started figuring out about myself. And the last thing I wanted to do was to look at other nude like men, quote unquote, young boys um, of my age group and have like some reaction to that. Like I was mortified right. that like I would right. have an uncontrollable like physical reaction, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now looking back on it and describing it, I'm like, man, that that's whack. That is so wild that like a 40 something year old man is walking around watching young boys who are like, what like uh like 10 11 yeah be naked and take showers yeah all that being yeah. said this is going to sound super inappropriate that gym teacher looking back and knowing what i know now he was hot and oh my god <laughs> i knew like that if, was like, what you're going to say <laughs> if he if he hadn't aged and i aged like if we were closer in age then I probably like I, I would have hooked up with him, but anyways. <laughs> anyways, no, that's fair. I, I I still fondly remember some teachers that I've lusted over as well. Yeah, for for me, um, it's interesting. Uh, would I call myself a semi nudist? No, no, I wouldn't really. I know, like Jim and I, I sleep naked. We sleep naked most of the time, like 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. But our bedroom is upstairs. Um, there is a second, you know, it's the second floor. So for the most part, nudity usually happens upstairs. You know, go to the bathroom, all the things, all the stuff. Down, down here, other than us coming downstairs because we have to use the shower down here because of the shower upstairs not working. That's really the only time, um, well, no, that's not true. Um, typically, we are new down here. Um, I've had the occasional 
like needed to grab something somewhere else, like in another room or in the kitchen or whatever. So next to me are, this is the dining room. I'm sitting at my dining room table. There are two windows on this um, wall and they're tall. If I look through them, I see the windows of our neighbors. I believe it's their kitchen. So I see them like all the time, but I see about like Mm -hmm. maybe chest up. They can see down. Um, (laughs) They can see at all. I don't know how much they'll be able to see. We do have curtains. Don't get me wrong. We do have curtains, but um, uh, I don't know how much they would be able to see, but that has often given me a little bit of pause to where unless I absolutely have to like come this way for something else, mm-hmm. um, I, I would never, it, I would not wear clothes here. And behind me, as I'm talking, um, we have a large window here and then the door is glass, like has a glass um, insert. Um, they're covered with curtains and such, but for a long time, the, the, the front door did not have, uh, not a long time, for a while, our front door did not have a curtain. Um, but it, so typically I could see out to the street, you know, now we're not that close to the street. You would have to intentionally be looking in to see anything. Um, but you would, there would have to be intention. So you have to kind of stand and stare. So my hope is that most people wouldn't be doing that, but you never know these days. Um, and if you, and if they're going to stare, enjoy the show. Right. (laughs) But, but like, um, when we're home, I don't, I don't mind, you know, us being naked, but we're not like nudists. We're not having people over and us being like sitting in like the living room being naked. We're not, um, doing that, you know, kind of stuff. Um, I I am similar, not really. So young, in my very younger days, I was small. I was a short, like, thin kid. Um, it wasn't until middle school, high school that I started growing, really high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and that leads to uncomfortableness, as Gary was talking about with your body with things that are happening um i know i had jim i'm remembering jim and in my high school years it was like fifth or sixth period i want to say it was later in the day and um i was terrified to do a shower to do the thing because we had to similar to to gary's story um we weren't like forced like no one was forcing it granted we were in high school at that point in time um but i was always afraid of changing i would change as quickly as i could no that's a lie um as i was learning more about myself um i would linger i guess the voyeur like side of me, which is like, because trying to not pay attention, but paying attention Mm -hmm. to the other people. Um, I don't think anything happened. I don't, I don't recall any incidents. I'll put it like that. So if it had happened, I, it never raised to a level of alert for someone else. Um, Right. But um, the, the main issue for me was, our like gym time coincided with the football teams. Like they're changing and stuff for mm. their things. Yeah. So I had, I had like juniors and seniors when I was, this was got to be freshman, sophomore year. Um, juniors and seniors changing with us as we're changing. Like, and I mean, yeah. I think my school. System- <laughs> I got to see was wow. definitely different from all yours because I remember 
being strongly encouraged to shower and it was and, and kind of in some sense forced like you have to go shower but they didn't really like check on you you could and it was usually yeah. after some sort of uh swimming thing so yeah washing out chlorine sort of thing so they well, were they were like hey if you go in in just your bathing suit great but we recommend the whole thing so as clarification the story i told was elementary school yeah, yeah i so i was what... i wasn't until junior high but it, it in addition to my school system, in my school system, why I say different school system, because I don't think I even was required to do PE in ninth grade mm -hmm. when I hit, hit high school. Mm, and interesting. Previ previously, <clears throat> yeah, and we, we were having this weird thing. It was this transition time. <coughs> Excuse me. In, in our, our school district where uh, originally, elementary school was first through sixth grade. Then we had junior high, which was uh, seventh through ninth. And then we had high school was just 10, 11, 12. And we were transitioning to move the ninth graders to the high schools. Um, but because they didn't have everything all set up and we only had two high schools, but we needed more space, which means we needed another high school. Mm -hmm. uh, but the high new the third high school wasn't built yet, <clears throat> so they actually split us up, where half of us would be at the high school for half the day, and then we would switch and go to a separate facility that they had set up, and. It was a mix between us and the other high school. Um, but I don't remember in ninth grade having been required to do PE at all. Um, and I don't mm. know if it was just because of part of it and then definitely not in, in sophomore, junior, senior year. Uh, mm. and, yeah, because I mean, we was, were... It was my worst grade anyway, so... Yeah, PE was was required for all years. Yeah. And <clears throat> yeah, I find that interesting because we not only was it required. So like I was saying in elementary school, like they were preparing us. So we had to use the locker room in fifth grade, had to take showers in sixth grade and then seventh grade through 12. So seven, eight for me was junior and then senior was nine through 12. Um, we had physical activity like gym classes, phys ed, blah, blah, blah. And then I remember one of the phys ed teachers that was male was kind of on the guys like really pushing on us that we should take showers after gym class. It was comical because what it really was about is that there were some skanky smelly boys and the phys ed teacher was like, he didn't say this, but it was basically like, go wash your ass. Like, <laughs> like you're you stanky. Like you need. Right. Yeah. Um, so, but that was that was a different circumstance. But yeah, I mean, I that whole it, that whole thing really impressed on me in such a way that like I knew plus going through puberty. What I was going to say earlier is like I have body dysmorphia. Like I have never really enjoyed my body nor wanted to see it naked, even when I got like I had a weight loss period a long time ago. And looking back at those pictures, it makes me a little sad because I remember being in that body at that time and looking at and seeing myself in a mirror and thinking that I was like grossly overweight when in fact mm. I wasn't like, yeah, I was, it makes sense now looking back why everybody wanted my business. And I was kind of overwhelmed by the attention mm. because it hadn't quite happened before. And I felt also psychologically it was super messy because I felt like people were interested in me because I had lost weight. Like there was something had happened right. and like now I was attractive and that messed with my head because I was like, well, fuck you. Like, why wasn't I attractive before? Like, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, right. it's a whole like thing. I should, I should yeah. talk to Ed. <laughs> Anyways. No, I know. Well, and he but, wouldn't probably allow it anyway. So because we're friends. Yeah. But anyway, so no, I know that for me it has, um, been a thing my whole life that I'm just not that comfortable with. Hmm. 
being naked. But I can, in certain circumstances, in certain places, like I've been nude in a pool before with other people, actually at least a dozen times. Um, but it was like a nude or clothing optional pool party. It was right. like, I mean, I worked at a clothing optional campground. So, I mean, like I right. got comfortable with nudity as a concept, but for me, it was still like, there's a time and a place. Mm hmm. So I find it yeah. interesting to go back to what you were saying, Jeff, about like how if you're with your partner or you're comfortable with someone, like then that's kind of a thing. And it sounds like Damien, you were kind of saying the same thing about you and Jim. Like you guys have been together for quite some time. Right. Yeah. And so it's kind of like like you both know probably every damn centimeter of each other's body by this point. So it's kind yeah. of like, who gives a shit? Right. Like, you know, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And and I I okay. I feel that. I actually got comfortable with at least my body and, and enjoying being naked uh, probably at a, and I didn't mention this before, but probably at a younger age where I would sneak around the house like middle of the night or something naked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would, I would sneak out of the house and just something about being outside and naked. It just felt good. And, and everything, but I didn't want anybody to see. I didn't want to get caught or anything. Um, just because yeah, pretty... it felt good to me. But I also realized, hey, I know other people wouldn't like this idea. But right. I'm doing this not for them. I'm doing this for me. And I'm making sure I'm not doing anything that anybody shouldn't do. Uh, well, actually, right. there was probably a few things I probably shouldn't have done, such as being naked on the front lawn in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, it, it's just, there was just something about it. And I, I think part of it is that thrill of doing this naughty, naughty thing in public. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I, I had that like little bit of expression streak and, um, and especially as I started, like, really coming to really know myself, like, first off, girl, I should have known that I was gay, like, when I was, like, eight. <laughs> the things I would do, why wouldn't I have fi figured this out? Probably because there was a lot of taboo. I come from <laughs> Minnesota, Mid-America in the 80s. Nowadays, probably yeah. a little more, you know, who cares sort of thing, uh, yeah. especially in Minnesota. Um, uh, we're, they're, they, they've gotten a lot better. Um, and like even over here in one time where just my pastors uh, uh, talking about somebody who is who is gay and says, says, well, I can't love you for your choices and but, 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 but I love you for the... It basically, the whole, like, I'm not going to... Love the sin or hate the sin. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. And I'm like, there's something right. bullshit about that. And also because I think because I actually knew at that time, but didn't, like, really admit it to myself, mm. that I was like... I don't want to be in that position. I don't, I did no, no, no. And just as I got older, I'm like the dirty, dirty thoughts that were going through my head about and even stories I would write. I, I don't know why, but there was this one time I wrote this really filthy story about one of my classmates who was pretty cute. And I mailed it to him just completely anonymous, anonymously. Oh my! I was oh a my. dumb kid. Well, there's the oh. mic drop moment of the show. <laughs> <laughs> but because of, I think because of all these like sexual thoughts and everything, I I think I'm one of those freer sort of people, especially when it comes to my body. Like, and I grew up when I grew up and I went to college and everything like that. I was, I was pretty slender. I'm not going to say skinny. I don't like that word. 
I was much, I, I had a lot less weight than I do now. I don't mm-hmm. know what happened, but after moving down here, I suddenly gained weight. My theory is that there were some bears out there that lost some weight. And guess where that weight went? <laughs> Here's the thing. Interesting. Is, yeah, okay. And just as I grew, I'm like, there was a few things that I kind of don't like, like my, my body, but I'm like, I don't really like it. Like, like I would prefer it a different way, but you know what? Yeah, it's fine. I don't, I don't feel like doing anything that, about it. So just accept it for what it is. I do. I love my body the way it is. Some things I w- would wish were a little bit different, but mm, I'm not. Right. I don't feel like taking making the effort to change it. So mm. whatever. It's good. Right. So I think because of that, like positivity of my own body got me a little bit freer when it comes to nudity and being nude and semi exhibitionist. Like I will expose myself to the the appropriate people. <laughs> That's not really nice. That's the best, best, best you know, but so, some, the, sometimes, but... uh, and and you guys know, sometimes when it's not necessarily appropriate. Fair. We right. had these things called power hours. If you remember. yes, and and there were moments that were off camera or not At recording. Least camera, if not like off recording. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting that you say that, Jeff. So, like, when I worked at the clothing optional campground resort, like, one of the things I had to come to terms with was that I was going to be around naked men. Which sounds weird to say, but, like, up to that point in my life, primarily, they had been, like, only in, in like, one of two, like, kind of contexts, like, I was around mm-hmm. naked men because it was like a gym, like it had something to do with that, or like it was because you know uh, intimacy was involved. <laughs> really, David? Anyways, but hand motion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, so I like so I had to like come to terms with the fact and say to myself like I'm going to see the male figure, all varying kinds of it, naked, quite a bit. Am I going to be okay with that? And I was like. Yeah, like, I I think I'll be fine because I was kind of parsing it and saying to myself, like, this is a job, like, this is an income, this is employment, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. The years that I spent, you know, the summers that I spent there were kind of very helpful to me to, like, be comfortable with the idea of being naked compared to where I used to be. Because I was very much like uh, a, not a recluse, but I was very much of of a... I don't know, like a closed community that never shows any skin kind of mentality, I guess, is the best way to to think of it that way. So, yeah, like, I mean, that shifted and changed things for me. Um, But, yeah, I mean, and and it's one of those interesting things. And now, bringing it to the modern day, um, we have events that are hosted specifically, like, as a body positivity aspect. Right. And it's all bodies, if not intentionally bigger bodies. And so I find that interesting and it makes me wonder whether or not we as a society have shifted to be more accepting in general about people's bodies. Like this is going to be a really wild thing to say, like have enough of us gotten fat as a population that we don't like criticize (laughs) people being fat like when we were kids, does that make any sense? Mm. I don't know. I don't think that's happened. Um, but I do think we've learned to be more accepting. Okay. You know, there's still like people, like kids are kids and, and people are people and we will still right. call people out for weight and fat and what have you. We, we know that's a thing. Um, but in a lot of ways, it's not as stingy as it used to be. Mm-hmm. You know, 
sometimes it's gotten to the point of allowing yourself to embrace the your you know reality, embrace your body, love your body. Yes, we talked about body positivity. Um like for me, years of repression growing up and not having that comfortability and not having not really wanting to be naked for a long time. It wasn't really until um, college that I learned to start enjoy, like liking my body more. Um, And it comes in waves. Um, I'm on kind of a a confidence wave in recent years. Um, I will admit, probably because... um, I've gained a bit more confidence in myself. Am I perfect? No. Um, I have been, as I've talked about my journey, I've been trying to lose weight um, for a while. And that has helped seeing, having people compliment the changes and compliment the loss and be complimentary of me has really helped gain, boost that confidence, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, um, are blue sky, particularly my not safe for work ones. Um, I'm out there, <laughs> like with no problems. Um, yes, yes, you are. Yeah, as your as thank your you, co-host thank you for and, flag- your, and flagging it so I can not look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to, to Jeff's yeah. statement, I can confirm that as your friend and as your co-host. Like I follow you on, on on social media platforms, but there have been a couple of times where I was like, that was a really quick scroll by or thank you for the filter, <laughs> like whatever. And and I will say this, like I am not a, like I don't mind having friends and like that love to get mm-hmm. naked or be naked or, you know, have sex and be sexy and all that. I don't have a problem with any of that. I just I'm I it's me. I own this now. I'm just not the type of person that like wants to see that or be a part of that necessarily. And I think it's because I, I, I don't use these words necessarily, but I think of it in terms of like family, right? Like I don't want to see my family naked. Like I don't want to see them doing things. I know that they do things. They make, they keep making more of them. So obviously (laughs) something's going on over there. You know what I mean? (laughs) But yeah. Yeah, but, but I, so I kind of think of it that way. So although it is interesting because there are some friends that I have seen naked, to be fair, that probably happened before we became friends. <laughs> so like I'm I'm like I realize I'm being a, a hypocrite in saying this, but like, I don't know, like I just that's to me, it's well, a respect issue. Like, right. Like, I'll say this to you, Damon. If I was to come across a nude of Jim for some reason, I would probably feel uncomfortable. Because, be but anyway, w- right, right, right. I, <laughs> well, I'll tell you this right now, so that it's recorded for everybody. If I come across a nude Jim, a nude of Jim, I'm gonna p- I'm gonna message you and be like, "Girl, I just saw something, and I don't know if you know what's out there." But, <laughs> 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 but no, I mean, like, like to me, it's just a, it's kind of a respect issue. Like I wouldn't, yeah, you know, want want to necessarily be the audience for that. Yeah. But I realize that not everyone's that way. Like we've had some beautiful guests who are very open and very like comfortable Mm -hmm. and could not care if like people were watching or or whatever. Yeah. And that's sort of where I I guess where we differ. There are very few people I will say in my like right now that if I saw them naked or being sexual or whatever, I would, I would be like, Oh no, 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 no. Um, Family's obviously one of like the big one, top tier. Like, no, never. But um friends, acquaintances, what have you, I, I don't I don't care as much. Mm-hmm. Um having said that, um I think there's a like you said, a respectability there that makes it I can understand where that's coming from. Where as someone who, especially, like I said, in like recent years, has grown to be more comfortable with it, um, I, I knew going into it and starting to post things more often, um, 
that that was going to be there there was the potential like people who don't want to see it are going to be it's going to be a little surprising just recently um i was asked because i'm i'm a title holder i was asked to take part in a um uh, jock caution for charity mm -hmm. and the person who asked me she asked me and i was like i didn't think any of i was like immediately yes and i'm like cool and as soon as the post became the auction became live literally i think on friday thursday or friday i was like oh that's going to be a thing and she posted and she's linked my facebook page which my facebook page has friends and family and what have you on it so i was kind of mm -hmm. like oh that's going to be a thing and i don't think it because i i saw her post and he had it with like filter a, a, cer a certain filter but the question usually becomes how do you see it if people can see if i'm tagged in it kind of thing but i right. told myself and i told my i told myself this years ago if there's an issue, someone's going to say something. I hope that you would say something. You would be comfortable enough to say something to me and be like, I don't like that. Or I don't want to see that. And I would have told, if I had gotten that, I would have told you to take it down. But I did think about it. And I said, you know, because Jim noticed it. Because I hadn't told him about it. Um, but Jim also, we're like the close friends thing. So they'll see everything that I'm tagged in. Like they have an alert right. to know when I'm tagged or something. So, you know, we'll see. I'm not, I'm saying the only time I'm going to be concerned is if I, and I, had, if I haven't heard anything yet, but is if I get a, a call from like my brother and I'd be like, oh, okay, so that's got to go. <laughs> if something like that happens. Mm -hmm. um, but, I don't think I would have ever done that five years ago, maybe 10, you know, five, 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. I think I'm what, probably the more prudish. 2018. Or, or the reverse prudish. Or the opposite. Less prudish. Mm. Um, right. The most open. <laughs> the open, because there's plenty of people on like, I've never seen them naked, but I'm like, and they're, I'm just like friends, friends with them. And I'm like, I would love to see them naked. Um, and sometimes it's just, I would like to see them naked so I can judge whether I want to see it again. Um, and there's somewhere it's like, like, mm. it looks good. Honestly, Damon's an example, but not somebody, but, uh, I saw it once I'm good. I have a certain type of relationship with them. This is not something I want to commonly see necessarily. Um, but seeing people naked and it's almost like uh, show me the truth, your truth sort of thing in, in some cases. Um, and not just something where, where I'm lustful at somebody. And plus right. when you say, I don't want to see anybody in my family naked. I can't say that. I know. We know. Very rare. Well, okay. Cl clarification. When I'm talking about family, I'm talking about like the the like inner circle of family, like the siblings, family. parents. Yeah. No. Like siblings, parents, cousin. Well, for <laughs> me, nieces, nephews, cousins. Like, once you start getting in the outer rings, I think that's a different like realm. Considering cousin. He's, he's 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 told us several times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, like no, there's and again, I I just think it's a matter of. I don't. I think it would be a matter be, of comfort. Fair, I don't. I don't the, the one cousin cousin crosses circles. Yes. So. Yeah. That's that's one. Of the yeah. Reasons. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I, yeah. I think that today there is more acceptance of the nude form. I say that like sort of with hesitation because I realize we are currently facing in our country a shift. Um, mm -hmm. 
because I, I think there's I, there's. I currently, I, I during, according, because of recently passed law in my state, my current state, I can't go to some porn sites. Oh yeah. Oh right. right. You're blocked from Pornhub now. And X Hamster, which is actually more of my jam nowadays. Right. Uh, well, um, not now. But but any any site where there's some sort of login or something, uh, mm -hmm. or or more less public login, if that's the right word, um, I can get into fine. So, but uh, the open platforms, that's the right word mm. for using it. Um, I can't currently access. That may change in less than a month. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think there is there is this like weird situation. Although I will say this, um, there is a celebrity that said a number of years ago that there's a pendulum swing when it comes to culture, and that it goes from like one extreme kind of to the other and then goes back and forth. So a lot of the quote unquote progress, the liberalism, the, we, the more accepting, whatever they had said, like they predicted that they would, it would kind of go the other way. Like, and part of it has to do with that culture and society can be only so accepting or personal boundaries or whatever can only be pushed so far. And then people resist because they feel mm. like you're, you're, it's too much change, which is making them uncomfortable. And that discomfort turns into action. And then they decide to like, you know, be like, nope, that is a line cross. That is, that is too far. Like you can't do this. So they become in, engaged and active. And I think that's like an, a fair estimate of what's happened for us in our political system that people have like, you know, are trying to pass all these laws to ban books and drag and trans. And I mean, it's just like, you know, and women's rights and, and all of these things. And so, um, and the thing that kind of, I guess, boggles my mind a little bit is if you haven't been on the receiving end of this, this like attention, this intentional restriction, um, you don't understand. And the right. downside of it is, is like, if you if you haven't had that experience and you don't understand it like i felt that way when i went to go work at the clothing optional campground like i didn't know what it was to be a nudist or a naturist like to be a person who just doesn't ever want to wear clothes <laughs> end of story like that's not that's not me that's not my life it's not how i operate and being that experience though and being around other people was eye opening and like interesting to me to like see people that are just like doo -doo -doo, like kind of going about their day like they have mm -hmm. no cares no interest no whatever and there's and and as you know a big thing for folks if they don't know this like people who are nudist and or naturist it's not about sex or attraction right. like like they are just there in their body the way it is and for me i had to learn that because being at, at a male only clothing optional campground resort like i thought i presumed very ignorantly like people who like to be naked also like to like be sexy or right. are very like highly sexualized or like frisky or whatever mm -hmm. and it took a while for me to like compute or like understand like no those are kind of two different things like can they be yeah. sex, like, you know, sex positive and very active? Absolutely. But they are not, yeah. like, they are not correlated nor causated. Like, they're two different things. Like, you can be nude or naked, and that has nothing to do with, like, your attraction to other people and, more importantly, like, the attention that you receive. So that was one of the things that I found interesting but also kind of difficult is to see – to watch, because I'm a big observer, to watch a crowd of people when a person is naked in their presence and, you know, in this environment where it's mixed and to see all the attention that a person gets because the, the mass percentage, the majority, finds the individual attractive. So right. 
like you're suddenly watching like kind of herd or swarm mentality like it being exhibited wow that's weird i was just thinking about mutual of omaha's wild kingdom anyways um <laughs> like i was thinking about how like all the animals kind of respond like similarly in a certain way and so like you know a guy would show up at the pool or at the hot tub or whatever like or walk into the hall or the dance floor or whatever and be naked and if they have a very nice looking physique like all the heads turn <laughs> or right. nearly all the heads turn like you know and that was interesting to me because i saw a different dynamics of how that played out some people appreciated like the attention and other people kind of like had different reactions some got annoyed some like you know just ignored it and like tried to not have that attention um yeah like i i was i found that uh, wildly like interesting intriguing as like an like a observational thing to be like whoa like this is kind of all over the place but it was also helpful because it like showed me that everything is not binary or a monolith like not everybody that's naked wants to be the focus of the attention some people do some people really enjoy it um and that's their thing uh right but that's not necessarily the case and then you know yeah. there's the other end of the spectrum yeah and i think that's sort of the the, for me, I had to get out of the mindset that I had to get out of that nudity did not equal sex. It does not equal sex. Like it doesn't have to equal sex. Um, and that was a hard, I think just, it was a harder, like not pill to swallow, but a harder break to, to, you know, get out of because for, I think for many of us, and maybe the three of us on the, for some of us anyway, the only time you were naked was when you were having sex. Like that was the kind of generalized idea behind it, um, was that mm -hmm. you only um, were nude when you were performing sexual acts. And that's kind of where the correlation lied. Um, now you can be com like, that's been the big thing for me is I'm more comfortable being nude in general than I ever was before. Mm -hmm. um, like I've been to the gay campgrounds now, don't get me wrong, dep like depending on the, the, the um, crowd, as it were, I may be less okay with it just out of general, you know, concern for myself but um seeing things like Folsom Street Fair and um events along those lines it's rather interesting to me the casualness of nudity and it not necessarily being a sexual thing going to those campgrounds for example um I was I was I remember <laughs> I think one of the first times I went um uh, i was checking in for me and jim we had just gotten there and i was checking in i'm and where you check in is sort of like the general store that they have and um a guy just walked in no clothes just walked in and kind of um went he was looking for something and he you know kind of said it and then i did did they say that he needed to put some clothes on i can't remember Maybe, maybe not. I'll have to. I'll check with you after, Gary. But, um, but uh, uh, I know it was. It was. It was shot. It caught me off guard. But I also, you know, I knew that it was a thing that was gonna could happen because right. this was a, you know, clothing optional campground. I knew this was something that could be a thing. You know, with our, um, our non guest this week, um, seeing the pictures and seeing the, you know, the event that he's at. I have a feeling while there are sexual things going on, that is not always the only thing happening. And that's not the end goal. The whole idea mostly about those events are about being comfortable in your skin and seeing like-minded or like seeing similar bodies to you. Mm -hmm. And that I think it's for me has helped me a lot is seeing more of the larger framed bodies 
being free and sharing themselves freely on like sites or at events or um, in the campgrounds kind of thing. I just, I've, I've enjoyed, it's helped me get a bit more comfortable because if they can do it, I can do it too. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's fair. And, I, and that was something that I kind of like took away as well. Uh, because, so back to your thing. Yes. If it was the place that I worked at, like that was a rule that like you had to have mm-hmm. clothing, but that was because it was the main part of the center of the compound where um, not necessarily what had happened on the weekends, but like the public could come and go. And so like, we just kind of created a bubble of like clothing area for the intention mm-hmm. of like the comfort of everyone, so to speak. Right. There's also like a, a hazard um, when it comes to food preparation and things of that nature that like, you know, having a nude body. Now, as clarification, given my line of work, babies, you could be naked in your own home. You can cook naked. Like, I don't care. I mm-hmm, put mm-hmm. on an apron if there's like splattering like oil and fat because that shit burns. But yeah, um, like <laughs> you need when it's a... there's one available at the Cubs Out Loud store. It says a lot from slash Cubs Out Loud. That's very true. <laughs> nice plug. Um, but in a in a business, there is an expectation that you would, you know, not only have safety in mind for like patrons, but also just like food preparation and like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was saying that. Um, one of the reasons why there's signs that say no shirt, no su- shoes, no shirt. So, um, that being the case, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely would have been a thing to, um, you know, tell someone to that they have to put clothes on. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I feel that, you know, we've, but, oh, to your point, Damon, when you said about how, like, you know, it, like, it was the, like, you were unprepared, like, as you thought yeah. about it, like, oh, this makes perfect sense. But I will say this. I have become so accustomed to seeing the naked human form in my life now. I don't bat an eye or think twice about it. And it's, slightly disconcerting to me only because I'm so oh, I don't like this word but it's the only thing that comes to mind desensitized mm-hmm. that it doesn't impact me and the reason why it concerns me is because I would not be able to discern appropriateness in some places Right. So as an example, in my line of work, like sex toys and protection is a thing. So if I visit a website that sells condoms and it sells demonstrators and I'm using air quotes, they're sex toys, like they're dildos, like, and I don't bat an eye and think about that. So like everything from porn to like nudity to sex toys, like it doesn't it doesn't like register as, oh, I'm in the workplace. This is probably not a thing that should be seen here. Like my brain doesn't like kind of filter that, I guess, or discern that. And that's what I mean is like, if, if someone was to walk down the street naked, I probably wouldn't notice until a couple seconds go by. You know what I mean? Like, like there would be a right. delay for me to pick up and be like, oh, <laughs> they naked in public. Yeah, I do have to say that I think I do have that switch of appropriateness in when it comes to in public and workplaces and, and things. I fortunately still have that, but I, I think I do have a similar sense to you, but I impede that depending on the place is when the filter is kind of on and off. I think I have a better switch or something. Mm. Like if I'm down at Hippie Hollow and I see a naked guy walk past or naked person walk past, I mean like, eh, whatever. Because I'm at Hippie Hollow, which is the naked space here in Austin. Right. Um, but if I was on the street and a naked person walked by, I would be like, oh, I mm-hmm. hope they're... I hope they're running because of 
they were somehow mugged and stripped of everything, including their clothes <laughs> or something like that. Or there's an appropriate right. reason why they're naked. I would question the situation. Right. Right. But that's what I mean is like, I think I've, I like, there's just been so much over the course of the decades of my life, like absorbed that visually, like, it's just, it's taken in as like a part of the landscape, I guess. Like, mm. like yeah. I wouldn't really think about it. Like, so as an example, I have nude artistic black and white photos in my bathroom. Um, they don't technically show male frontal, but like I have them there because I saw them on eBay. There was this artist. I liked the stuff that they did. They had a particular set of a trio of pictures. I bought two out of three. I really should have bought the third one. I regret it, but, um, <laughs> but I have them up in my bathroom and they're tasteful. But like if a contractor was to come over or my landlord was to be here, like I would, probably take them down i'd have to remember to do that though like because it's just a part of the landscape of of my life or whatever and i don't have a lot of that but to me that's sort of equivalent like i like it's just there and i don't necessarily think about it so it doesn't quite register so if i was to like and i know i need to be conscious of that because i've got one of these things and mm -hmm. like this little pocket handheld you know computer <laughs> can deliver dick in an instant i mean right and i don't mean physically but you know so like and and because it has the capability to do that i need to be careful about what i access like what i'm doing because i have like multiple twitter accounts as an example like so if i'm not paying attention and like say i was at home and i was looking at my like adult profile and then i'm out in public and i forgot that was the last thing i logged into and i like want to go like look you know at a trending news item or whatever i need to remind myself or be prepared that i might see peen show up immediately because <laughs> i'm not on my you know non-adult account i guess or whatever right you're saying. yeah that's been sort of the we still have those moments where you know you know, nudity, for lack of a better phrase, nudity is available 24-7. Um, but mm -hmm. just because it's available doesn't mean you should always be looking at it. Yes, we're telling people to be modest. Yeah, I don't want to, I think more... To an extent. I think, yeah, I think it more just like, lack of a better phrase, read the room. Yeah. Right, you be, know, be aware like, of your space. Yeah, like if I were still working and taking the bus, you know, to work, I would not be on my phone looking at X2, not one X2, but, you know, looking at, well, <laughs> my saucy Twitter um, on my way to and from work. Like that's just because it's a right. public space and there's a lot of people around. Um, I probably wouldn't also look at it at the office. I might. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, there's a possibility. Like, if I was at, like, my not at my desk, maybe, but, like, maybe, like, at at the, in the lunchroom, in an area where I could be by myself a little bit more, like, maybe. Actually, I did. I used to do a lot. Um, uh, I mean, I'm not lying. Like, fuck this. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I know. And see, that's just it. Like, and so that's where I think the proliferation of the accessibility and mm -hmm. that being out there, I think has shifted society in general that I think we are now, let's say 40 years, compare yeah. 40 years ago to now, I think we are much more accepting um, in general. I don't general. have a good recollection I, of 40 years ago. Are you kidding me? Like, you couldn't find nudity. It was either porn or nothing. Like, like right. I don't know about the two of you. I think we've discussed this before. Like, the Sears and Roebuck catalog with the men's underwear section, like, yep. like that was the thing. Like that was the closest you were going to get to seeing the naked male form. I um, also had a brother that was nine years older than me. Also, uh, forty years ago, it was three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, listen, you two young whippersnapper fuckers. Like, I don't have time for this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was just a baby. Anyways. 
But anyway, that but I get said... what you're. I get. I get what you're saying. <laughs> That's why I said I don't remember forty years ago. <laughs> but I get mm. what you're talking about. I get what you mean. Like there yeah. was, it wasn't like and, it wasn't yes, as it, readily available. Yeah. You know, I too also had older brothers. So Gary, you don't have this luxury. <laughs> you you well, do not have this luxury. Well, I mean, it, it it wasn't until like maybe in the '90s, but uh, those porn magazines that my brother had in his drawer at the at the house uh, were not necessarily my type. Right? There's that. I mean, my dad was uh, and a collector of Playboy magazines, right? And so <laughs> it's going to sound crazy. The running joke about Playboy is that people, people read Playboy and happened mm-hmm. to see they got it for like, the articles. pictures. Right. Right. <laughs> and there's no, there's no lie in that like stereotype or, or that portion of it, because it was like a journalistic type magazine with like adult cartoons in it. And, you know, and it did have nudity or whatever, but like, for me, it was a big deal when my dad would like buy or trade or whatever, and he would end up with other things. So he had like Honey, Hustler, Cherry, like he would end up with these other magazines. And in those magazines, sometimes there would be men. Uh, most of the time, like their private parts would be like positioned in a certain way or covered or whatever. So you couldn't really see anything. But once in a blue moon, you would get one with a naked man. Um, mm-hmm. Even better, an erect naked man. Uh, and that was that was a big, big deal because that kind of wasn't the, you know, main purpose or the focus or whatever. So, right. yeah, like so, I mean, there was some awareness. But, yeah, no, I, I agree that I hear you with that. I didn't have family members to, like, pass on yeah. that <laughs> legacy or that accessibility or whatever. Yeah. You want to call it. And, and I have the. And I don't know about Damon, but um, as a late Gen Xer. um. And yes, 1980 was the last year of Gen X. I am a Gen Xer. I'm not a millennial. I will never associate with the millennials. <laughs> Boy, I mean, does that I'll sound be friends like with them. I, I enjoy some of the content that they make, but I will not be. I will not be classified as millennial. I will never be able to do it. Anyways, um, we grew up. The the key moments were in the beginnings of the internet and access to online stuff where we could where if you knew how and I'm not sure how how good Damon would have been with any of this you could go to a something called a Usenet news group and there were some that were alt dot binary dot pictures dot erotica dot Mm. men dot chubby dot bear yeah yeah i didn't have that um took several minutes for the uh, images to download and then i would have to yeah, crash wow. on the on the computer because it was a family computer i'd have to listen for anybody coming downstairs be aware of my <laughs> where my brother was because his room was right. downstairs with the, with the family computer yeah yeah and might have gotten caught a time or two or three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, so I think like technology led to the proliferation and the like expansion of availability to content. Um, so it intrigues me as to whether or not now people are more comfortable with nudity in general and their, their own bodies because of that yeah i i think that might be a big factor especially when nowadays you can go online and you will can find somebody that is like you maybe not exactly Mm -hmm. like but you know has some sort of similarities to to uh your body shape or something and you can see hey that person's positive their body they're showing a naked picture of themselves or or they're in a video in a video 
See, I can offer something. <clears throat> you, you can, it can boost your confidence just to see somebody else like you. Right. Right. And I will say this, like, I think I see more and more today than ever before in terms of like the nudity that's out there, that there is more of that potty, that potty. Wow. That body <laughs> positivity. Right. Um, aspect um, like one of the things I like the most is couples or housemates question mark like just being very casual like about their like we're just hanging out watching a movie mm -hmm. like like you know having a chat played a game or whatever like and it doesn't technically have to have a sexual aspect to it yeah um and I guess there's a part of me that's like, that looks comfortable. Like, and and that's mm -hmm. the feeling, like, and that's what I would hope for, for folks. And there's Agreed. plenty of times where things such as, and there was a time, yeah, it was during the days of serial movies, especially, where I ended up finding some friends that, with benefits, um, that I would just be like, hey, why don't either you come over here or I go over there and... We'll hang out, watch a movie naked together. Hmm. Take off our clothes, watch a movie. Then somewhere along the lines that then eventually got sexual, but in general, we were able to do an activity. Or even we'd have the acti one the activity, like the sexual activity, and then we would go watch a movie and we just wouldn't bother to put on clothes. Or, or the the watching the movie was interrupted by us then having sex and then we stopped and finished the movie or something like that. That's Netflix and show, but not yeah. you know. But yeah. anyway, but yeah, the the uh, it's funny because um, I'm realizing now, and I had done I had, it just came to my mind that brought the casual like nudist to my mind there were um i had neighbors when my my parent not my parents but my mom's house um they lived very close and they were nudist although they were nudist in their home they weren't nudist like outside you know give me mm -hmm. wrong like i never saw them nude like out, you know but um uh, I got to know them. We thought we, we, they were, they were a gay couple. Um, and if you remember gay.com, that was a, that was a thing. Um, that's how I sort of, for lack of a better phrase, found them and, um, uh, got to hang out with them a couple of times when I would come home during, while I was in college. Um, yeah. And, they were kind of that same like sort of way. They were very casual, very relaxed. Um, did things happen? Yes, because I was a you know horny college student, but <laughs> but like the I will say I enjoyed the casualness of the just being in the room just naked, mm -hmm. talking and laughing and enjoying each other's company. A bit of, there's a bit of freedom there, I will right. say. Yeah. That's fair. So I think for the future, um, it'll be interesting to see where we go with this. Like if the we do find that there are more like nudist spaces, um, whether they be private or public, um, and what that could mean for for folks um, right. and where that will be having worked at, at such a business like i don't even really think much about it like to me it's like yes those places are out there and you can seek them out if you want to i will say this if anybody like is unsure about their own like sense of like nudity i would say visit a business like that and see what your experience is like um i would try to like go in without any preconceptions or expectations yeah like, don't yeah. go in and think that it's going to be an orgy, but also don't go in and expect, like, 
that it's just going to be 100% nudity everywhere. Right. They are called clothing and I think... optional. Correct. Correct. That reminds me. And with that, but enough talk about nudity for now. I have a feeling we will discuss this again in the future. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what are your feelings? Do you sleep naked? Do you want to tell us that you that you'll sleep that you sleep naked? You can. You don't have to, but if you'd like to, there's plenty of ways to do that. Make way. You can pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Follow us on the various social media outlets that comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL, such as Facebook, Twitter, and right here on YouTube, where you can like, comment, and subscribe. Trust me, it helps. All right, you can join our uh, entourage chat on Telegram at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You can also subscribe to our Google Calendar to see when we're planning on recording these things. I'm using the word planning because, well, plans change sometimes. Um, but you can see those changes on our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements such as an apron for when you want to cook, cook while naked, but still have some protection from, from any splatter. Uh, you can get that over on Zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Lab, where you can get various types of t-shirts. Gary and I absolutely adore the made-to-be mm -hmm. shirt, hats, handy towels, etc. Uh, some of those designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear, which reminds me I need to do something. Uh, new product coming soon if I remember to do it. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, or um, you can send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, we do appreciate all of your support that way as well. Uh, if you uh, don't have the funds to support us or don't feel for some strange reason that you don't want to send us any money or get any merch, you can just uh, like, comment, subscribe over on YouTube, or even rate us and review us over on the podcast catcher of your choice, such as Apple Podcasts uh, or Amazon Audible, Spotify, that sort of thing. If you can't find us there for whatever reason, let us know, and I'll see about making sure that we're listed. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box set box puppy box club box something or other. Dan. He's muted. There you are. Okay. <laughs> if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Um, most of their related sites are on Facebook. Um, if you, you I, I'm also uh, Pup Umbra 79 on Blue Sky or Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. They are not safe for work. For the safe for work stuff, we, we we were talking about that anyway. For not safe for work, or for the safe for work stuff, shit, uh, you can find me as DMA Gamer Seven Nine on Twitter or TikTok. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gare Bear Seven Three. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.
so you Jeff, you distracted me because you were kind of like I was I started talking and you were looking in the camera at something and I was like, what do you is there, can you not hear me? And I <laughs> like what is going on? And I didn't know what was going on and, and it kept then I realized, oh, you're just looking for the 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 share your sound and stuff. And yeah. anyway, it just it just it threw me off and that threw me off for the rest of my time. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on with you, David, because I was like, what is happening on his end? Like, I was like, is Jim standing naked in front of you or something like as a gag? <laughs> because you were like discombobulated slightly. You were trying yeah, to do your no. part. And I was like, what is going on with him? It, it was just getting completely distracted. And and I mean, I one of the things was I was looking at com slash comes out loud because um, I realized I hadn't I don't have the made to be shirt. And I was like, I should maybe I should get that. And I've been so I was looking to see if that was what I would want to get. But um, anywho, um, um, yeah. So speaking of Jim and nude, um, Jim doesn't have any. What? Oh. Yeah. Nudes. Yeah. Yeah. He does not have any. Um. Well, that'll be disappointing to our patrons. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, patrons. Um, you either get it in person or you don't get it at all. Again, exactly. Like, again, for me, it's one of those things where it's like, like if I see them, I'd be like, ooh, and maybe I just don't intend to because I have a certain relationship with them. So, right. Sure. So. But yeah, like when when you when you commented Gary about if I if I saw them, I'd be like, what? And I'd be like, if you saw them, I would be like, what? Because <laughs> yeah, that that's a. I mean, it was an he, example. Yeah, it was an. It was yeah, an example. I know, I know. He's had. Don't give no, no. That's not true. We do have snoots. I just realized we do have snoots. But they're yeah. Anyway, sorry. That's that's okay. Now you're putting everything. Those were personal. Those were personal. I was just gonna say, like David grabbing the fan and fanning himself. I was like, oh, like that's not a tell. Like, yeah, like, yeah. It was a certain circumstance, Gosh. and yeah, that's that. Wow. Oh. oh. One moment, please. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, in terms of what we will be doing regarding our guest, I'm just speaking because it seems both of you disappeared on my ass. Um, so uh, I'm hoping, I'm very hopeful that we will reschedule them soon, like very soon. If not because of their schedule and our stuff that's coming up, they may not be on for a while. So this was a whole timing thing to try to get it for today. Um, right. Because there's some stuff coming up and that like, so I was optimistic and excited. And then when I saw their message, I was like, oh, okay. Well, that's a thing. Yeah. Understand that does kind of suck. It happens, but it, it does. I would say it would probably, it was not the best of circumstances, but hopefully. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry. Hopefully, we will be able to um, see them again. It was or one of those moments where it's like, again. it was one of those moments where it's like, well, fuck. No, right, right. Do? No, I, I totally and, and agree. Not, I mean, like, when I... no problem with them. They, they need to do the thing. That's fine. But now we need to figure something else. <laughs> no, I know. And that and that's the thing is like when when I saw the message I was like damn, um, and then I and the thing was I had a whole bunch of stuff already going on today and I was like Ugh! I was like I really don't have time and um, Damon and I were recording uh, the COLDR like mm -hmm. finale episode so that was a whole like other couple hour commitment thing. Speaking of which, I need to go and edit and get that ready to post. So yeah, um, Jeff, you'll have that for this week. Right. But yeah. Um, and because I now work Monday through Friday, that will be another 
late posting, so po patrons, uh, this, show, this show, and uh, actually for the foreseeable future, it'll just be a little bit more of a delay, but I always try to get them out at least the next day, even if it's later in the week. And I'll probably post the live ones to go live, or the public ones uh, to go live later in the day as well. I was originally doing noon, but I'm like, eh, let's give the patrons more time. And plus, I can set the video, the uh, public videos to premieres. So technically, when they go live, we could be there in a chat and people can chat while watching it. So it's kind of like a delayed stream almost. Oh, Except they only see the show part. All right. Well... I think we've reached the end. Yeah. Huh. As a side note, mm -hmm. as Jeff prepares to put up the end card, uh, Ryan Reynolds, you know the new uh, Deadpool and Wolverine movies coming out. Mm -hmm. Apparently a new trailer is going to drop tomorrow. Ooh, interesting. interesting. So if you're not hearing this live, go check it out. In the meantime, I'm going to stop recording.